the WL Toys F949, a miniplane modelled on the well-known Cessna 182. Over on the flight test forum we were having a challenge to see who could build the lightest flying FT Mini Scout and for my entry I wanted to use a 1S power system, but I wasn't really familiar with setting up 1S systems, so I figured it would be easiest to order an existing model that does and use its parts. The F949 seems the most viable candidate. It's a rudder and elevator model with a similar size to a Mini Scout, and so I ordered one in. Then I considered how I'm a bit of a fan of WL Toys. I've enjoyed flying their V931 model of the AS350. After buying batteries that were too big for that, I bought their V977, modified the battery tray and found it was a superior heli. I actually call it all reliable for how many times I've crashed it without having to replace any parts. Then I got their V911S after it came up at a bargain price and I was curious about a fixed pitch heli with cyclic steering. After buying a Blade 500X and wanting to practice on a more mid-sized heli, I bought the V950, which you can see hasn't been quite as robust as its smaller siblings. And finally, a K989 model of a Ford Focus. I'll be happy to review any of these if people are interested, but do note the first two models are discontinued now. So, what can we expect from a fixed wing made by this company? Opening the box we find a pair of manuals, one manual that I think is French and another that is Chinese with poorly translated English. Under that we have the wing, landing gear, spare prop, screwdriver, the fuselage with tail already assembled and the transmitter. The battery for the plane is stored inside the battery tray. I do like how the tray is locked with a small swinging latch. Inside you find a 500mAh 1S battery. Let's begin by installing the landing gear. On my Ishin Mini P51, I left the gear off, as the real P51 would fly with it retracted, which the model couldn't do. However, a Cessna 182 can't retract its gear, and so flying with a model with the gear permanently out looks fine. The main gear is a bit stiff to get in, but I don't think you'd be at too much risk of breaking anything. The nose gear goes in a lot more easily. It leans though, so make sure to attach it so that it's reaching forward. The wing pops into place effortlessly and is held in by a single screw which you should find in a bag. The assembled model looks rather nice for the material it's made from and they haven't skipped out on too much detail. The manual is unintentionally funny in parts. I think they meant to say throwing stance here but they've ended up writing throwing France. The poor translation does become a problem when you want to know how to replace the prop. It quite unhelpfully says the exit of the propeller in the direction of the arrow out so that the replacement of the propeller. Yeah, I don't know how I'm meant to do it. I just tried pulling on it and it came out with the drive gear. The shaft is loose so I couldn't just push it back on. I had to perform a bit of surgery on the model to gain access to the engine area, then shove a pair of pliers in to hold the motor shaft in place while I push the prop back on. Good news is, if you're careful, you can cut a bonnet hatch and tape it shut without spoiling the model. I still don't know how I'm going to replace the propeller if I break it though. It's as if it's glued together with the spinner and the gear. Moving on, the model might have some loose threads of foam hanging off it. You can easily pull these off without damaging anything. Another problem I have with this model is the transmitter demanding 6 AA batteries when previous transmitters from WL Toys have worked fine with just 4. Powering the model on is a little unconventional as well. Usually the transmitter goes on first, then the battery is plugged in on the model. If you do that with this model, it won't bind to the transmitter. You have to power on the model first, then the transmitter, every time, which is not teaching good habits for larger models, including the WL Toys own V950. The transmitter you get with the F949 seems to be a one size fits all currently being issued with all of the WL Toys products, so there will be a couple inputs on this that don't lead to any outputs, though I do like how the low rates and high rates can be toggled with a shoulder button. I recommend doing a quick taxi test before flying. You may find you need to straighten the nose gear a little in order to get it taxiing straight. The F949 comes with the standard WL Toys USB battery charger. It can charge two batteries at once if you wanted to get a spare. A red LED lights up for each battery port to indicate charging and goes out once fully charged. When plugged into a wall plug charger, I found it charges from empty to full in around an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes, I lost track of it. So, after unboxing and assembly, I was feeling a little disappointed with this model, as I have come to expect better design choices from WL Toys, and wasn't sure how much I would recommend the F949. Then, I flew it. 
I successfully took off from the ground on my first attempt. I don't have a lot of models that can do this, so I'm not very well practiced in doing it, and it doesn't always go so well for me. So for this tiny model to be easy with this was a nice surprise. Then, after just a little bit of nose down trim, it was simply a joy to fly. In low rates it keeps well within beginner territory. I attempted a loop, it stalled gently, and recovered on its own. When attempting a roll, it started to go into a steep but controlled spiral. So I switched it to high rates. Loops are just about doable. Rolls were still hairy though. This is a limitation of the plane being rudder and elevator only, but one does wonder how good a real Cessna 182 would be at these manoeuvres, and so I feel inclined to grant it points for being scale. When flying in gentle winds, it really does feel scale and looks graceful in flight. This footage was filmed in 8 mile an hour winds, by the way. Fast enough to feel when you want the plane to go a specific way, but not so strong as to have this tiny 57 gram model Dutch rolling and bobbing all over the place. Considering the price I found it for, this would not be a bad first entry into the hobby at all. If you were unsure whether you would enjoy flying model planes, this is a good taster model that would be easy to put back in the box and sell on if you found it wasn't to your taste. The plane is easy to launch by throwing, which is good because the prop only has about a centimeter of clearance from the ground, so you are not going to taxi or take off on grass. It can do fine on tarmac, but I don't have any laid down in the areas I can fly in. I found sheets of hardboard make a good portable runway, and I really wanted to land on it, but that was much easier said than done, especially as I was making my approach in a slight crosswind. In my many attempts to do so though, I learned many more good things about the F949. One, it looks even more scale coming in on approach with a crosswind, something a rudder is ideal for. Two, it is very good at gliding. And three, it can take a hit. None of these falls were the hardest crash it could have found itself in, but they would have certainly left a mark on a larger model. This one barely picked up the mud from a field that will coat any larger plane in it at this time of year. I will note though, the prop does not have the energy to shake off all its mud with the centripetal force alone. You will need to wipe it clean. Feeling the flexibility of the prop combined with how lightweight the plane is, I imagine you would have to crash it really fast into something really hard to break this prop. I never did succeed in landing smoothly, but I did get pretty close. Finally, after a cumulative 21 minutes of flying, the battery finally ran out. Like any other model, when the battery runs out, it cuts the throttle, but maintains power to the control surfaces so you can still glide home. So there we have it, the WL Toys F949 Cessna 182 a mini-scale, entry-level plane that is a lot of fun bundled into a small package.